Let's take a look at uh, problem five. You might want to just pause the video for a minute and read uh, problem five here. It's going to be real quick, though. We're up to the sixth. Well, it's really the seventh because we start with m0 in our sequence of interesting spaces. We take r2 and we delete n. Let's say n equals four. Uh, let's say n equals five. Just to be fun. Five points. And the question is, I have, in vector calc language, I have f with scalar curl f equals 0. How can I, how complicated can that be? And the claim is that f is going to be equal to some vortex a1, a2, up through a5, plus the gradient of a function. And where this vortex a1 through a5 means take a shifted vortex with strength a1 here, a2 here, a3 here, a4 here, and a5 here. And so you have five numbers, the circulations around each of the missing points you have to specify. And then the other freedom you have is the freedom you always have, which is just take the add a conservative vector field in. So here's the implicit characterization of f that its scalar curl is 0. Easy to check if you're given one. Here's the explicit construction. Construct the special vortex with certain strengths and then add in any cons uh, conservative vector field that you want. The claim is those are equivalent, the ex implicit and explicit descriptions. So uh, the number of numbers you had to pick, again, the number of numbers to specify it, up to adding in the stuff that's always the same, adding in the conservative vector field, is equal to exactly the number of holes. Now that's a little bit different from uh, problem one where we had, remember we had the, the real line and if you took out say two holes there were three pieces and you needed three numbers. So it turns out that uh, this one dimensional uh, case is a, a bit special um, or the case of whether it's connected or not is a little bit different, just a tiny bit different, sort of all shifted by one. But here, it's the number of holes that have, can have loops around them to detect uh, circulation that you need. OK, so um, what, if you do, what if we go into three dimensions? We've done a lot with two dimensions. We've really gotten a feel for the kinds of questions we can ask and answer here. Uh, hopefully, you know, probably somewhat unfamiliar questions about counting holes and, and this idea of how many numbers you need to specify something. Well, so let's go to three dimensions. R3, okay? Now, we're not going to necessarily use this property real soon, but I wanted to point out, as I say on the left-hand side, it's connected. It's simply connected so that any loop in three dimensions can be contracted to a point, or equivalently, any uh, closed curve you can fill in to be the boundary of something a surface. But it's also true that if you take a two-dimensional blob that is itself closed, so it has no edge, like a sphere or just like a lumpy sphere or even maybe like a torus, then you can fill in in a three-dimensional fashion so that that is the boundary of something. So in other words, very similar to what we were saying before, if the boundary of a surface is zero, then that surface is the boundary of a region. We'll call this being two connected. So because this is a 2D surface, that we're testing with. Um, and it's close to the real notion of two connectedness, and it's the, the, the version we need. Okay. So now I have this. Write down and prove the analogs of problem 2ABC for M7. So that was when we were dealing with just R2. Um, and so what was that? So 2A was talking about gradient free vector fields or grading few functions rather, so locally constant functions. What could, how could we disconnect R3? And then what if you have not scalar curl f equals 0, but what if you have curl f equals 0? And what theorem do we use to show that f is conservative? OK, so that's, some of that's really kind of review. Um, if you have f, a function, with the gradient of f equals 0, or in other words, df equals 0 in the form language, then, since R3 is connected, then we can use exactly the same argument we had before 
to show that it's constant. Okay, But if we took R3 and we took out, say, a whole plane going off to infinity in all directions, then it would have two pieces, and this, this wouldn't work. And you could have to have one value over here and another value over here. Now notice, if you take R3 and you take a line out of it, that certainly doesn't disconnect. So somehow it has to be uh, all but one dimension has to, be encoded, has to be included in the thing you take out. A line you take out, you can go around, it's still going to be connected. Okay. Well, what about the analog of 2C? Now we really use the honest to god curl. So we have something, a curl free vector field equals zero, identically zero everywhere. That's what the triple bar means. Does that imply that f is conservative? Well, that's a very standard result. It's the 3D version of the standard result we had. And the proof of that uses Stokes, the classical Stokes theorem, where now it's the, the member that's the version of Green's theorem where the surface is in three dimensions and can be floppy, but otherwise it's basically Green's theorem. And of course, it's the namesake of and a special case of the differential form Stokes theorem. So we want to show, we know that if the integral over any closed curve, and this is the big theorem that we're using that I'm not going to bother to prove, partly because its generalization is probably the hardest part to prove in all this story, and I don't want to be forced to prove that, um, of f dot dr, if that's always 0 for any closed curve, then that implies that it's a gradient. Because in fact, it allows you to use integration to construct this potential function f. Well, why would this be true? It would be true because if, if you have a closed curve, it's still simply connected. That's the integral over the boundary of some region r, or some surface s, let's say, because it can be floppy f dot dr, and that by Stokes is the integral of the curl dot ds, and the curl was assumed to be 0. If we want to translate that to differential form notation, we might want to pause it because I'm going to erase it, then what we've got is instead of a vector field, we have a one form alpha, and we know that the integral over c of alpha is the integral over the boundary of s of alpha, because this was a closed curve, and because r3 is simply connected, that means it's a boundary. That's not going to be true in a minute. Then you use Stokes in its most pretty form, and the assumption was that uh, alpha was closed to begin with. If it's not closed, there's absolutely no hope of it being exact, being d of something. But if, it, if it's closed, we do have hope of that. And this says the integral over any closed curve of alpha equals 0. And then our big theorem takes over and says, yes, turns out you can construct alpha as df. OK. So that's just the one-form translation of that. And it's really similar to what was happening in R2. OK, so now let's make the space more interesting. Let's go back down. OK. Now we take out an axis. M8 is R3 minus an axis, a line, doesn't have to be the z-axis, but let's just, to be definite, we're going to take out the z-axis. Remember, that doesn't disconnect the space, but it does do something interesting. It means it's not simply connected anymore, because much as an analog to what happens with the plane, you take a loop around that axis, and that is something that can't be shrunk to a point. Or equivalently, if I try to stretch a fabric across, so that I want that to be the boundary of a surface that goes it goes outside the space because the red has been taken out of the space. Okay, so you might want to look at these questions first and pause if you want. It's still connected. I gave that away. It's still it's not one connected anymore. Remember that's the uh, the systematic way for term for zero for uh, simply connected. In fact, connected we could even call zero connected. Um, so, ooh, yeah, don't want to check mark there. It's not one connected because of this example. Here's a tricky one. Is it two connected? We haven't really used the two connectedness of anything yet, but we will. But let's act about, go ahead and ask about this. Is this space two connected? If I take a surface that's closed, like a distorted sphere, or even, let's say, maybe a torus that does wrap around this thing, let me make it clear that that's um, how that works. The torus is coming in front here, 
and then it's in back here, so this red comes in front. Okay. So suppose it, these surfaces themselves have no edges. Can I actually fill them in? Well, yeah, sure, I can fill this guy in. And I couldn't really take a sphere kind of object and actually have it have a problem because I can't take the, I'm not supposed to have the sphere intersect the red line at all. And even the torus, you might think, well, maybe I can screw it up by taking a torus that wraps around because that was something that screwed up this, uh, this curve where this closed curve was not the boundary of a surface. But look, I can still fill in this donut with filling, this nice cream filling here, and that's fine. The red doesn't interfere. So this is definitely not something we can prove rigorously, but the claim is, yes, that if you take a surface that's closed and you ask whether it can be filled in to be the, so that the surface is the boundary of, of a, a blob, so here we have surface that bound, it's, that's itself boundaryless, is it true that that's the boundary of a blob? The answer is yes when I've taken out this, uh, this line. That's very interesting. And that's one of the things we won't be able to prove really rigorously. Okay, so now, um, it, because it's not one connected, not simply connected anymore, then we're gonna have the situation where just because a vector field is curl-free does not imply it's conservative. And so what we wanna do is we wanna say, well, how much more do we need besides a conservative vector field to create a curl-free vector field? Well. This is exactly like in one dimension. Take a look at B there. The vortex vector field, if we use vector field language, it's verbatim the same formula as in two dimensions. It's just that I haven't used a K, and I don't make it depend on X and Y. This is a standard way, and we'll use a, vari a variation of this again later, to take a two-dimensional example, the vortex vector field, like this, something that, that curls around but gets weaker as you go out. Um, and we just promote it to be a 3D vector field by making it the same, do the same thing in all the planes. So I'm just kind of taking this in sheets and stacking it up on itself. And that's the way to do that is just write down the same formula and declare, okay, that's in three dimensions. So what's the circulation of that around a circle that loops around? It's the same calculation as in two dimensions. The integral over the unit circle in the xy plane of v dot dr is 1 still. Okay. And so that suggests how we could ev emulate what we we're doing in two dimensions. Take a look at c there. You might want to pause it if you want. Okay. It's almost exactly the same. We take a random vector field f and we define a to be the integral of that on the unit circle. And then we create A times the vortex vector field. And the claim is that if I subtract that off, that is a circulation-free vector field. And that, by of the big theorem that I'm refusing to prove, is the gradient of, of a function. And so exactly like what we had before, on this space, um, any, cr any curl-free vector field is an honest to God conservative vector field, which is boring by now, plus a certain multiple of the vortex vector field. And the way you figure out what multiple to use is you take that curl free vector field and just integrate it around the unit circle. So one single circulation integral determines everything interesting about f, and then you know how to create f, at least up to whatever this function is, and we don't we often don't care very much about that. Okay. So same story exactly. And it's not an accident that this example uh, was created by taking the plane with the point taken out and just basically putting lines everywhere. In other words, in, to use a little bit of fancy language, it's R2 minus the origin and then cross with R, just adding one more coordinate, adding the z-coordinate. That means you get everything but this axis that was taken out because here that whole point the point taken out of the plane turns into a whole axis that's taken out. So it turns out that any time you do that, you cross with R, just put in an extra sort of dimension with ex no extra holiness, you're going to get this, this corresponding phenomenon that the same example and the same topological properties are basically going to hold. It's a very general thing. Okay. And then to finish up, we can ask, well, what if we took R3 and we took out like three parallel lines. 
well, we're going to need to create vortic vortices wrapped around those three axes. We're going to have three numbers. We're going to have to take the circulation around these three axes. And those are the three key crucial numbers to determine what f is up to the addition of a conservative vector field. And so once again, so if I've got R3, now it turns out that the number of sort of one-dimensional holes equals the number of numbers to specify this vector field. Um, here it was just one. In general, it's going to be the circulations around all these, all these axes. So pretty cool that this is, this is working out that way. Uh, I just decided, just real quick, I decided to do that with vector field language. But instead, if alpha is a closed one form, then alpha is just going to be, you know, like in the case where we took out one, it's going to be alpha v tilde plus df. We take our standard vortex vector field, turn it into a one form, multiply it by a, where a is just integrate alpha over the unit circle to get that magic circulation number. Use that a to create this, the appropriate mul multiple of the vortex one form, and then add in df, which is boring and stupid. Okay. Again, the translation with one forms is really, really direct.